Hello everyone, I'm Tresser44 and welcome to this Let's Play of Blades of Avernum. Last episode, we managed to finish going through all these tower basements, cleared out the creatures in these areas. I just realized we missed an area. We didn't go back through there, but... I should also mention, we did find something to get us some heat in our bodies. And cure the frostbite. We'd got back just in time before we passed out. Now we're standing among the bodies of our comrades, I think. Private Every lies on the ground on his back. You roll him over to reveal that his plate armor has been ripped open, and a grisly wound covers most of his chest. Blood and smashed furniture tell you how this man went down. Fighting. He was a strong and resolved man, and even though he was no veteran, he kept his head in a situation that would drive most mad. Plate mail would be useful. Sergeant Burden lies here in a pool of her own blood. Her neck is turned at an awkward angle, and her body has been savaged, seemingly by large teeth and claws. Your leader, your party's beacon, lies dead. She never lost hope, and perhaps she was right. After all, Cryoprev could have saved the rest as it did you. She rose to the occasion and kept you all going through adversity. But for what? In her hand is the vial of cryoprep, the elixir that could have saved you all. Would have saved you all had it not been for the beast. It's empty now, but you pocket it anyhow. We don't need the winter boots. sword is going to be any better or not. Adriana's clothes are ripped and tattered, as is the flesh beneath them. Her mouth and eyes are open in a wordless scream, frozen that way forever. She got what she came here for, a shot at the beast, but she didn't get her revenge. Perhaps nobody can stand up to the thing, but you'll try. You too are hunting for revenge now. You shut her eyes carefully. Jamie lies where he fell, hurled there by some great force. His bow lies beneath him, broken by the force of his fall. A peasant in a soldier's world, the man most familiar with this land, but least familiar with the task you came here for. He died like a soldier, even if he hadn't lived as one until this week. He is no longer here to fight for Matabor and its inhabitants, but you can finish the beast in his stead. Captain Ainsley lies on the floor, his body mutilated and his face almost unrecognizable. You only pick him out because of his distinctive officer's armor. He wanted you to carry on, to finish what you came here for, even if he was too weak to help. That was who Ainsley was, duty first, self second. Did the cryoprev help him recover so he could face down his foe, or did he die in his feverish sleep? You'll never know. He wouldn't have cared whether he died with honor, that wasn't what he was about. But none can deny he lived honorably. I don't know if any of that's any use. Yeah, that's the large shield. Well, we've got five hide tack, hard tack. Wait a minute. Where's Fabian's body? Having examined the scene of the slaughter, you were left with even more questions. How did the beast get in here? Why didn't you awake during the fighting? Why was the most defenseless man, the one who was asleep, not the first killed? Even more importantly, where is the sixth body? All are accounted for save Fabian. You have searched the room thoroughly, but his body is nowhere. Drag marks lead up the stairs to the south, giving you a possible explanation. You need to find Fabian wherever he is, but right now your stomach is growling. The horrible sight you've beheld hasn't kept your body hungry from needing nourishment. You reach into your pocket and find a half-eaten piece of hardtack that wasn't there before. The other's expeditions must have been successful in finding food. You take bite as you head out. You'll have to eat on the run. There's nothing for you in the rest of these research facilities. You alone were left alive. You alone survived the bloodbath behind you. You think you know your purpose. To kill the creature that did this. I kind of wish I'd known what was in there, but it's too late now. You follow the dried bloodstains up the stairs. Whoever made them was either dragging himself or being dragged, and you're willing to bet either way it was Fabian. If the beast was dragging him, then Fabian was either dead or is dead by now. 
If he was alive, then why would he leave the cellars voluntarily? You don't think this is going to have a happy ending, but you have to at least try to find his body before you can be at ease. The heavy doors ahead of you hang open. At first you stand in shock, marveling that any creature, even the beast, could somehow smash these massive doors. Then you realize something strange. The doors aren't broken. Something unbarred the doors from the inside, which means one of two things. Either one of your fellows opened the door and let the beast in, doubtful, or the beast entered elsewhere in the cellars. Did the beast open the door on his way out, dragging Fabian behind? Or did Fabian stumble out under his own power, bleeding all the way? If it was a second, why would he do that? Maybe he thought you were dead and that he alone survived. Maybe he was driven mad by wounds and horror. You can't know until you find him. You emerge from the cellars and into the sunlight. Last night's storm faded as abruptly as it came. The sky is sunny and clear, and the snow is beginning to melt away. There's a strong breeze blowing, but you don't feel at all cold. You feel as fresh as the landscape. Gone is the exhaustion of yesterday's mad dash, the leaden feeling in your legs, the terror. You want to run, jump, cavort, if just to test out this feeling of strength and rejuvenation that you haven't felt since the first day you arrived here. This way. The trail of blood continues on into the mountains. The snow here has begun to melt, obscuring any footprints. You can't tell if there is one set of human prints or a set of larger, more sinister paws. Either way, your path is clear. Follow the blood. You are starting to feel increasingly warm, so warm that you are tempted to take off your jacket. You've heard that the last stage of frostbite is a feeling of burning heat, but that certainly doesn't seem to apply to you. You wipe the sweat from your brow and keep going. Your stomach grumbles again, the piece of hardtack you just ate wasn't enough, and you're already famished. Well, we have another. The trail forks from here, but the trail of blood you can tell which way Fabian went. A cloud of steam billows from your sweat-drenched hair as you finally give in to the heat and pull your helmet off. You don't feel tired, the short run is hardly any exertion compared to last night's sprint, and you feel like you could run for miles. Yet you are sweating like a baker that just ran a mile. Apparently, the heat isn't your imagination, and it isn't a result of physical strain. Maybe you're finally getting acclimated to these temperatures. After all, Orin never complained of cold, or had to e wear a jacket, even. You follow the trail of blood ever higher into the mountains. You are drenched in sweat and feeling so overheated that you want to throw yourself in the snow just to soothe your skin. You pull off your jacket to assure yourself that your skin isn't burned to a crisp, and don't bother putting it back on. At first, this was a welcome change from shivering in the cold, but now it's starting to get alarming. The ground ahead of you ends in a steep cliff. Behind you, the mountain soars another fifty feet or so. You can see for miles from your vantage just below sp the spire's peak. White, sloping mountains, wind-swept crags, the speckles of green in the expanses of snow. It's easier to appreciate the beauty of the mountains when you aren't struggling through the snowdrifts. This path leads the last hundred yards or so to the very peak of the spire. It isn't, however, the direction that Fabian took. His blood marks lead towards the entrance to a cave in the cliff face nearby. eat a piece of hardtack. Strangleweed. You heave a sigh as you descend into the cave, relieved to finally be out of the blistering heat of the sun. The air here is refreshingly cool. You strip off your gloves and shirt to better enjoy it. That done, you take a look around you. After all, your reason for coming here wasn't to refresh yourself. Fabian's bloodstains recede further into the mine. At least you're starting to think it is a mine. Erasmus had said Amon Sewell was built to guard gem mines higher in the mountains, which would support your theory. Also, these tunnels certainly exhibit the gouged walls and reinforced ceilings characteristic of a mine. Whatever it was, it was long ago abandoned, and is beginning to cave in. You proceed carefully, alert for any ambushes by the beast, and for any signs of where Fabian is gone. Several corridors diverge off of this central gallery, but all of them have caved in. At the far end of the ruined cave, you see the body of Fabian. Your heart sinks. The crumpled form of your friend leans back against the wall, devoid of any signs of life. Fabian sits in a pool of, of his own blood, leaning with his back against a boulder. Although he lies completely still, his face is flushed and sweat-drenched. Last time you checked, corpses don't sweat. 
You pick up your pace to jog towards him. The sound of your approach causes him to tiredly pick up his head and fix his gaze on you. He looks up at you in disbelief for a moment before bursting out. No! No! D don't hurt me! Stay away from me! You bloody fiend! Stay away! I I'll fight you! He stares at you with wild-eyed fear, holding up his arms to ward you away and scrambling to push himself as far back against the wall as he can. You approach with your hands held up in a hopefully disarming gesture, assuring him that you are his old friend, not that ravenous creature. The look of terror in his eyes slowly fades, replaced by... Laughter? <laughs> you poor fool, you don't even know, do you? You poor bloody fool, hiked all the way up here. God damn, Vincent, you really don't know. The fever and shock have clearly gone to his head. His maniacal laughter continues on. You crouch by his side to tend to him. His left leg has sustained a serious wound, and although you can't see his stomach beneath his tunic, you can tell from the blood that he is grievously wounded there, too. Combined with a plethora of other more minor headaches, scratches, the feverish glow in his eye, and the heavy sweating, Fabian looks to be in pretty bad shape. You pull out your herb satchel and begin stripping off what remains of his clothes. He pushes you away irritably. What the hell are you doing? When you persist, he grows belligerent. Get the hell out of here with this junk! One moment you're tearing me up, next you're trying to put me back together! Just leave! You begin to protest his accusations, but he grabs you by the collar and pulls you close. You can feel his warm breath. You listen here, damn it! I know who killed me! I know what I saw! I know who ripped apart my friends with his bloody teeth! I had to halfway take off your leg to escape! Why I bothered, I don't know! Look at the goddamn facts! It was you back there, not the beast! Look at the goddamn blood on your face, and bloody tell me it wasn't you! Tell me, damn it! You stare into his eyes in unaccepting disbelief. You feel his rapid breath, the sweat of his palms gripping your shoulders, the taste of blood, the taste of flesh. Screams. The realization slowly dawns on you. He's right. You break away from his grip. You stagger backwards. Your head is spinning. The world is spinning. You feel like you're going to faint. You feel nauseous. You double over and vomit. Fabian has relaxed now. The glint in his eye is gone, as is the burning anger. I'm sorry, friend. It was the drug. It did it to all of us. It's doing it to me now. It just hit you worse. I... I'm sorry. The words reach you as if from miles away. You hardly hear him. There is nothing but the feeling of emptiness and revulsion. Your stomach now purged, you turn to your blood-stained face. You scrub at it viciously, but can't wash away the sense of uncleanness. You writhe on the floor, clutching at your face, trying to escape your own body. Fabian's voice drones on from the distance. He stares vacantly past you. It's always burning now. Always hungry. Always hot. It's the drug. The cryoprev is driving me now. You blindly claw through your pack for what you aren't sure, until your hands grip around the glass vial. You hold it close and read the label through blurred red vision. Cryoprev, for the treatment of frostbite and hypothermia. It won't let you die, not if it can help it. It rebuilt your body in just two days, but look at me. Look at me. The cryoprev is in charge now, and it won't let you die. When it takes over, the madness is on. You see nothing. Warnings. Cryoprev accelerates the metabolism. Patients diagnosed with... Cryoprev can cause drastic and dangerous changes in the body's metabolism if used inappropriately. Use proper dosages to prevent this and other long-term effects. From your eyes, I could tell. It, it, tell it wasn't really you. The drug was hungry. It needed energy to burn. It's sweating away our lives. A separate sticker attached to the bottom of the label reads, Cryoprev has been recalled due to dementia, long-term metabolism damage, and other brain damage associated with spikes in internal temperature. Continued use is disadvised. The drug should never be taken without consent of a doctor. Patients who have taken the drug and complain of blurry vision should see their doctor. Cryoprev batch number 19 is officially under recall. You let the vial roll out of your hand and lie in silence for minutes, gasping for breath between the retching and coughing. You lie on the ground, sobbing, vomiting, scrubbing, anything to rid yourself of those haunting images. The gouge marks raking Burden's face. Ainsley's mutilated visage, Adriana's once wordless scream that now echoes through your head. They all flash through your mind. The screams, the pleas. Fabian's voice reaches your ears again. Do you hear that? That's why we're here. They died for a reason. Damn it, I'm dying for a reason. Listen, damn it! The 
This time you hear the reverberating roar. Whether it's because you were listening more attentively or if the noise is just getting closer, you'll never know. You lie still, wanting to tear yourself from your own body, to escape the things you've done. Useless. All useless. Stand up, damn it! Stand up, you bloody coward! Look what you've done to me! Look what you've done to all of us! I'm telling you to stand up, to kill that goddamn creature and end this! Fate knows I can't, now do it! The next thing you know, you are standing upright with sword in hand. How you got there, you don't know. Your friend's words struck a chord, one powerful enough to drag you from your misery and self-loathing. So it is that you now face the beast, the last of your expedition to do so. The creature stands panting, blue-black pelt glistening with perspiration. You stare into the ravenous eyes, face down the slavering jaws, untrembling. The creature is huge, thrice the size of a full-grown man and rippling with muscle. Its movements are ungainly and lurching, but it is strangely quick and agile, bursting forward from a standstill to a frenzied sprint in an instant. It is this last ability that it chooses to show off now. The creature bears down on you, massive claws scrabbling through the cave's rubble to gain footing, spraying stones and dust behind it. It has smelled its next meal. As the burning eyes grow rapidly closer, and with them the drooling behemoth that has hunted you so ruthlessly and with such ferocity, the strangest, most laughable thought passes through your head. You are famished. Well then... I guess the only choice here is to kill him. We can make, we have enough time to make one stra uh, where is it? Choking dust, I think. Drink this potion of alacrity and strength for combat. <coughs> it's not even... I was stunned, I think. It is over. The beast is dead. Lying at your feet, the creature has lost all... has lost the supernatural air it once had about it. It is no fiend, no evil scourge, and it wasn't a immortal. What it is, however, you can't be sure of. Its body is swollen and has grown prolifically, th although disproportionately, but beneath the bulk and muscle, the thick shaggy hair, the claws that could easily envelop your head, you see a familiar form. Its cloudy eyes once burned with the hunger you feel even now, its body drenched in the sweat that turns your own skin sticky. You have a vague idea of how it got to be the way it is now, how a creature becomes a monstrosity like the beast. Just an idea. Regardless, it is over now. What it was or how it got to be that way matter not to the people of Manabor, and it matters not to you. The creature is dead. You've done what you came here for. You turn to see Fabian smiling. <coughs> so the beast was one of us. Fabian's skin is even more flushed than you, when you last saw him. As you sit down beside him, you grasp his hand. If it were any warmer, you're convinced that his perspiration would boil. Nevertheless, he grins grimly. So it's over. You finished it. And now we're the only ones left. The very last ones affected by that vile stuff, and we're as good as finished, too. I see from the look in your eyes that you saw it, too. If it made that, then what about us? Well, what do you propose to do about it? What can we do? Not much, admittedly. I crawled up here in half a daze, just trying to escape, to run for my life. I really assumed that I was feeling the same effects you had, that I was under the drug's influence, too. I, however, don't have any food source to draw on. If I feed it, feed the drug, it would restore me. I'm sure of it. It has no fuel as it is now, so it is burning me. I can feel it, Vincent. Feel it consuming me. It restored me in a night. It could do the same for you. A night? Vincent, it was two nights ago. Two nights? It hardly felt like one. Still, it restored you, regardless of how long it took. You offer a Fabian a piece of hardtack you have left over. He looks at it as though it were poison. Put it away, I'll have none of it. You realize what this means, don't you? Even with a food supply, we'd sweat to death if we leave these mountains. We can seek no aid, no medicine. We're doomed to live like this forever, but how long before we lose our minds? 
How long before I forget I'm Fabian and I become what we have came here to fight? Food can save my body, but it would remain slave to the drug. Fabian Giovanni is dead. Vincent Graff is dead. So what do you propose we do? My release has been here all along, resting at my hip. I've been fighting with myself, Vincent, but I can't bring myself to do it. The desire to live, even a twisted existence, is just too strong. You follow his gaze down to the dagger at his belt. Even in the end, when I know all is hopeless, and I stand to bring more good by ending it now, and I can finally do something brave, I'm too weak to do it. A coward to the end. Are you really saying... He stares at you levelly, and speaks quickly and urgently. I've already made my demand of you, and you rose to the occasion by killing that creature. You owe me nothing, Vincent, but look at that corpse and then look at your hands. The drug will warp you, twist you against your will. It will drive you to kill again. We will have accomplished nothing by coming here. You see what must be done as plainly as I. You are strong enough to do it, whereas I can only lie here and hope I never muster the strength to get out and find food. I fear the drug won't let me waste away like this. Eventually, it will haul me out of here. It'll f it'd find some meat. I'd begin to recover, which is why I make this request. Take me with you. He stares towards the cave exit. Finish this, Vincent. Finish it once and for all. You wordlessly bend down to pick up Fabian. Your friend is remarkably light. He has cast off all his armor and gear, and the cryoprev has wasted away the muscles and fat stores of his body. His body shakes as you shoulder his weight. It takes you a moment to realize that he's... laughing. To the top. You are hungry. Your body screams for food. Your nourishment to keep it from devouring itself. Your friend's mangled bodies flash through your mind, the hungered look in the beast's eyes. How long... How long before you were like that? Out in the mountains there are places no man trods, where you could live to feed the burning inside you and perhaps never kill again. No time for cowardice. No time for selfishness. The words flow through your, mi flow through your mind, but you can't even remember who said them. You are increasingly unfamiliar with your own self. How long? Fabian whispers weakly from your back. No, Vincent. Nothing. Nothing there for us. The cliff... The cliff, remember what the drug made you do, and don't give in. Do what you must. So hungry. Live. The precipice before you falls off into a thousand-foot drop. Wind chips past the cliff, pulling at your shirt and tugging at your arms. The end waits just a step away. Do what needs to be done. Embrace your fate. Embrace your fate, and don't flinch. You stand on the edge of the precipice, looking out across the Great Fall. The mountain calls. Apparently you spoke aloud, because Fabian speaks up faintly. I can hear it too, Vincent. So this is it. This is how heroes die. Just know that I hold none of this against you. You were true to the end. Farewell. You breathe deep, feeling the hunger, the burning. The drug's tendrils have wrapped around your mind. You can do nothing. You are helpless. The bodies. The beast's eyes. No. You step purposely. Step out into nothingness. You fall and fall. And as you do, the tendrils unwrap. You see clearly. You are free. <coughs> Vincent Graff is dead. The beast is dead. Your fate is fulfilled. Okay. That was a story. That's how it ends. Unless there's some other working vial on the other in that other path that we didn't look at, but I seriously doubt that, but that's how it ends. That was a hell of a story. I, I'll be honest, I love that story. Frostbite is a very good choice. I wonder what that last, <laughs> that must be what was down that path I didn't look. The last, uh, the last herb thing, whatever it is, 
reci potion recipe, but that... That was a story. And that is a path I would take in the end. Couldn't let more beasts exist to cause problems like this. To become the next beast. I really liked it. <laughs> I really liked it. Frostbite is a very good scenario. The only flaw I can really think of is... It kind of needs an editor to go over it, because there were a lot of, uh... There were a lot of spelling errors and the like that I did stumble across quite often. More often than there should be, so... That's the only real flaw. It was also very difficult at times, but... This is a difficult I can attribute to myself. Because I'm not an ideal at building. I think I read somewhere that there may have been a sword I could have gotten somewhere, but I don't know what or where it was. And I am not the one to use potions recklessly. I really hold back on holding potions, because you never know when you might need them later, and that seemed to happen a lot. Especially with the healing potions towards the end. I was really struggling to get through that. But, that is the end of Frostbite. Next episode, we're going to move on to another scenario I was told to try out right after this one. And I think I'm going to need to do some editing in the files to get it prepped. That'll be in the next episode. So until then, I'm Tresser44. This has been a Blades of Vernum Let's Play. And I shall see you all next time.